Hello everyone and welcome to the launch of Anasis 2 by SpaceX on a Falcon 9 rocket. Um, <laughs> so by popular demand I am here doing a live Q&A before the launch, uh, the launch live stream. Let me normalize my mic volumes here. Let's see. Maybe I can just move the thing closer. How's that? Testing, testing. All right, looks good. All right. <laughs> so, welcome everybody. Um, if you want to know what this is, uh, the Anasis 2 satellite is a military communications satellite for South Korea that SpaceX is launching from Florida. Um, and I don't have much more info than that. Uh, here, let me, let me do some Google Foo, see if I can... Uh, See if I can get some deets for you. And I hate that term, but just like just like dab, I use it to invoke cringes because uh, that amuses me. Anasis two military communication satellite. Hmm. Let's see here. The Anasis 2 spacecraft is based on Airbus's Eurostar E3000 satellite bus, over 80 of which have been ordered for various communications missions. While the mass of Anasis 2 is classified due to its military mission, other E3000 E3, satellites range from 4,500 to 6,500 kilograms at launch. So it's a moderately hefty uh, satellite uh, will be deployed into a ge geostationary transfer orbit so this is headed for GTO I mean for G for geostationary orbit eventually satellite will then utilize its own propulsion to maneuver into its operational geostationary orbit in the past geostationary communication satellites made up the bulk of spacex's commercial launch manifest but anasis 2 will be spacex's first gto mission of 2020. they've been doing a lot of a lot of leo missions all right <laughs> eh, microbyte tried to use the dab emoji that only works in in discord by the way which I will link in the chat. So, um, looking for questions. Microsound, thank you for shouting out the like button. It's funny, you know, I mean, we all know YouTube, we all know how it works. Like, subscribe, click the bell. But if you don't remind people, they will oh so easily forget. Hmm. Mayaka Brown says Elon Musk is obviously an alien. Good heavens. He didn't deny it. He was asked that by Joe Rogan one time. And I think his answer was, could be. Uh, micro boost, micro sound asking whether there will be a booster landing. Uh, that depends on whether they need the extra boost from the Falcon 9 for this payload. Um, I don't, off the top of my head, I don't recall the masses of previous geostationary or geo, geo, geostationary transfer orbit launches by Falcon 9 craft and, and the, the mass of their payloads. But basically, uh, it comes down to, will there be enough fuel left over after the uh, satellite is deployed into its geostationary transfer orbit in order to land the booster? So maybe, probably, um, depends. It really depends on the mass of the satellite because, of course, geostationary orbit is a fixed uh, altitude. I mean, LEO is all over the place. Medium Earth orbit is a wide range. But geostationary is what it is. Now, um, uh, geostationary transfer orbits uh, can vary in in their 
their um, um, trajectory based on the uh, maneuvering capabilities of the of the satellite itself because it, because when a rocket deploys a satellite into a geo, geostationary transfer orbit, the rocket itself doesn't go out to 22,000 miles or whatever. Um, it only puts the satellite onto the correct path so that the satellite reaches 22,000 miles, at which point it can use its own thrusters to circularize its orbit at that uh, distance. So the question is... Um, yeah, what are the capabilities of the uh, satellite itself? And, uh, all right. So, we now have a stream starting from SpaceX. Let me get this ready for you. So, thank you for coming, and hopefully... Oh, AP Chemistry Course asks if I would try KSP. I have KSP. I just haven't played it. It seems kind of superfluous because um, because uh, there are so many very successful and prominent YouTubers such as Scott Manley and Everyday Astronaut, etc., etc., who play KSP that it seems like me picking up the game like, whatever, six years or however many years it's been since it came out um, yeah, like I said, seems a little superfluous, but, uh, um, uh, I should still give it a try because it's probably fun and fun is cool. So anyway, let's, let me get my stuff in order here. I've got to switch the audio so that you don't hear that noise in the background. Okay, and, oh, there we are, Scrubex slash SpaceX. Uh, Hal9000 asks if I celebrated the landing on the moon. Um, I, well, the, so the, tw the 51st anniversary of the Apollo landing now it, it launched on what was it the twenty second or twenty second the sixteenth, but um, but it landed on the twenty. Let's see, no, it, oh god, my times are all off. In any case, um, what my times are confused. Hold on. Ask me a question and make me all confused. July 24th, for Pete's sake. Yes, the, the anniversary is this Friday. Um, thank you, Norley33, for that donation. Much appreciated, of course. Uh, yeah, so the 51st anniversary of the Apollo 11 moon landing is this Friday. Um, and, oh, here we go. I'm going to sign off. Enjoy the show. Good afternoon. It is Monday, July 20th, and on your screen is a live view of the Falcon 9 rocket as it awaits its 5.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time launch from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. My name is Michael Andrews, and I'm a supply chain supervisor here at SpaceX. And welcome to our webcast coverage for the Anasys 2 mission. Our customer today is Lockheed Martin on behalf of the Republic of Korea. Per the customer's request, we will not show payload deployment today. However, we will stay live on the webcast and bring you verbal confirmation of spacecraft separation. We are just at under T minus 11 minutes and counting, and all systems are go for an on-time liftoff this afternoon. But if for some reason we are not able to launch today, we do have a backup window tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern. Uh, now let's take a closer look at the vehicle that will launch our payload today. On your screen is that view of Space Launch Complex 40 with the Falcon 9 rocket. It's our two-stage liquid-fueled launch vehicle getting ready for liftoff. 
Falcon 9 stands at about 230 feet tall, 70 meters tall. Uh, that's greater than the wingspan of a 747 aircraft. The bottom two-thirds of the vehicle is the first stage. It's designed to be re reflown 10 or more times with minimal refurbishment between flights. And as you can tell from the re-entry soot on that first stage, it's pretty easy to spot a flight-proven booster. Today will be the second flight for this particular first stage, and actually less than two months ago, it was the one that launched Bob and Doug to the International Space Station on our historic Demo-2 mission. At the bottom of that first stage, there are nine Merlin engines. They get Falcon 9 off the ground up to the thinner parts of Earth's atmosphere before separating from second stage and making its way back down to Earth for landing. And it's this part of the rocket that we will attempt to recover for a second time on our drone ship, known as Just Read the Instructions. You can see it there. It's stationed 350 nautical miles east of our launch site. And above the first stage, above that black interstage band, is our second stage. At about T plus uh, 2.5 minutes into flight, the first and second stage will separate, and that second stage will ignite its single MVAC engine. That'll carry the Anasys-2 spacecraft to its intended orbit. And the Anasys-2 satellite is currently safely enclosed inside the 17-foot diameter payload fairing. It's that structure on the very top of the rocket. This protects the satellites from aerodynamic heating, loads, any kind of contamination that we might experience during ascent. But once we reach the vacuum of space, we no longer need those fairing halves, and we jettison them while the second stage continues to orbit. The fairing halves we're using today are a brand new set, which means we'll be attempting to recover them today using our two recovery ships, Miss Tree and Miss Chiff. Two minutes before the fairings are set to land, the team will decide if conditions are good to make a safe catch attempt. Now, weather plays a big factor in the decision, uh, as it can impact not only the sea states for the boats, but also the fairing's altitude, position, and speed, uh, all of which impact how the fairing will fall back to Earth. And finally, around the Falcon 9 rocket is that large truss structure. It's called the transporter erector. We call it the TE. The TE rolls Falcon 9 to the launch pad and raises it to that vertical launch position and also routes things like power, fluids, and communication to the rocket and satellite. Hi, I'm John Insperker, Falcon 9 Principal Integration Engineer here at SpaceX. We're coming up on eight minutes to launch and all conditions continue to be go for launch. Falcon 9 rolled out to the pad Sunday afternoon about 25 hours before launch and went vertical four hours later. Now more recently, the SpaceX launch director held the go, no-go pole for both prop load and launch. That was done at T-minus 38 minutes. Now we're currently working, no issues on the Falcon 9 launch vehicle. If we do have to call a hold on today's launch, we have a nearly four-hour window that could allow us to reload the ultra-cold liquid oxygen and make another launch attempt today. Of course, that presumes that we understand whatever caused us to hold the count and we can safely proceed with a recycle and launch. Now, if we cannot continue today, we have a backup opportunity tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern. Now, we've been loading propellants on Falcon 9 since T-minus 35 minutes, putting fuel into both stages and oxidizer into the first stage. Our fuel is the refined form of kerosene known as RP-1. The fuel is fully loaded on the second stage, and we're going to finish loading the first stage in about another minute. Now, as I mentioned a moment ago, our oxidizer is super chilled liquid oxygen. We call it LOX. Now, the LOX is currently loading into both the first and second stage. You can see the, the mist streaming off of the first and second stage tanks. And until it started. Now, I mentioned it is super chilled. We do this in order to load more LOX into the tanks and increase performance. Typically, launch providers use LOX right near its boiling point of about 300 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. At SpaceX, we chill the locks about 40 degrees colder. That makes it denser. It lets us load more into the first and second stages. Now, we have to load the locks as late as possible to keep it from warming up and decreasing the performance. We're also finishing helium loading onto the first and second stage tanks. Now, as the Merlin engine pumps pull the RP-1 and locks out of the tanks, we need to fill that emptying volume that we call the ullage. We use the helium stored in pressure vessels on the stages, and it's heated by the exhaust of the engine's gas generators. Heating the helium helps it expand to fill the tanks. Now, a moment ago at T-minus seven minutes, we heard engine chill begin. We're now allowing a small amount of the super chilled liquid oxygen to flow past the turbo pump inlets. That's cooling them down to avoid thermal shocks when we light the engines at T-minus two seconds. On the spacecraft side, the team did transition the Anasys 2 payload to internal battery power starting inside of T minus 30 minutes. That work is complete. There are no issues, and there are no further actions required before launch. 
We're launching out of the eastern range. The good news is air and sea space is clear. Weather balloons that have been released show the upper altitude weather is good. We did have to delay the T0 30 minutes for a small rain shower that was crossing the trajectory path. That was moving out of the way. So right now, weather looks to be good for a launch in just over five minutes as all systems continue to be go for liftoff at 5.30 p.m. Eastern time. As we mentioned earlier, our customer today is Lockheed Martin on behalf of the Republic of Korea. We now have a quick message to share from Korea's president of the Agency for Defense Development. 안녕하십니까? 국방과학연구소 소장 남세규입니다. 코로나 19로 어려운 환경에도 불구하고 아나시스트 위성 발사에 관심하시는 여러분께 감사드립니다. 아나시스트 위성은 한반도 평화를 위한 것으로 한국의 IT와 우주 분야 연구 개발의 한 단계 도약이 되길 희망합니다. 원래 창설 50주년을 맞는 국방과학연구소는 아나시스트 위성 발사의 의미가 남달라 저도 코로나 19 상황으로 발사장에 직접 참여하지 못해서 안타깝게 생각합니다. 비록 물리적 거리가 멀리 있지만 지능적인 온라인상의 사회적으로 가까워진 거리와 시간 때문에 저도 마음은 발사장에 계시는 전문가 동료 여러분들과 함께하고 있습니다. 라키드 마틴, 에어버스 그리고 세상에서 가장 스마트한 펠콘 나인 발사체 발사를 주관하는 스페이스 X 모든 분들의 노력에 감사드립니다. 아나시스트 위성은 대한민국 국방부 방위사업청 합동참모본부 각군 관계자와 특히 함께 연구한 국방과학연구소 위성통신 체계단이 응원하고 있습니다. 아나시스트 위성 발사와 목표한 궤도 내 시험까지 성공하길 진심으로 기원합니다. 우주의 신들은 하늘길을 열어라 벨콘 라인 나가신다 아나시스트 완벽하라 감사합니다. We're currently three and a half minutes from liftoff. Falcon 9 is now moving into the final stages of the countdown. The vehicle remains in good health. Now, during that video, the transporter director Strongback did retract to the launch position, moved a couple degrees away. That's what we need, sufficient for liftoff of the Falcon 9. Fuel loading is complete on both first and second stages. The liquid oxygen loading is wrapping up on the first stage and will complete at T minus two minutes on the second stage. Now, one minute before liftoff, you'll hear the announcement that Falcon 9 is in startup. That means the rocket's internal computers on first and second stage are controlling the launch countdown. Now, the mission manager reports the Anasys 2 space vehicle continues to be go. The range continues to be green for launch, and the weather is looking good. Now, once again, as a reminder, if we don't launch today, we have a backup opportunity tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern. Two and a half minutes to launch. We have closed out the first stage liquid oxygen load. That just leaves stage two locks loading to finish. That call out tells us that the chill sequence we began at T minus seven minutes is now complete. Stage two locks load is complete. That completes propellant loading on the Falcon 9. Stage two locks load, the last one to finish up inside of two minutes. We'll now begin venting down the plumbing lines that go up that strong back that you can see behind the Falcon 9. So if you see a, a plume of white uh, gas coming out, that's normal. in the view from the camera. We're now venting down the liquid oxygen lines on the strong back, getting ready for launch. Next event will be startup coming at T minus one minute. Falcon 9 is in startup. Here's the call out. We're in startup. We're now pressurizing first and second stage tanks for flight. LD countdown net, go for launch. There we go, the final call to SpaceX launch director is given to go for launch. 
We're at T minus 35 seconds and counting. All systems are go. T minus 30 seconds. Stage one tanks pressing for flight. T minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition. Lift off. M1D propulsion is nominal. Plus 40 seconds, everything looking good? That's the call out, says M1D engines are throttling down, getting ready to reduce vehicle acceleration in preparation for the period of maximum dynamic pressure. We're in the bottom of the throttle bucket, as they call it. Now the Merlin engines coming back up to full power as we get ready to go supersonic. Equal is supersonic. Supersonic, we're coming through the period of maximum dynamic pressure. Well, has reached maximum aerodynamic pressure. Guidance engineer confirms we're through the period of greatest pressure on the vehicle. Continuing downrange, trajectory looks good. Propulsion looks good. Avionics looks good. And back deep chill has started. That announcement from stage two propulsion. We are now beginning to chill in the turbo pump on the upper stage engine to get ready for its ignition coming up in about 45 seconds. Nice view from the SpaceX cameras at Cape Canaveral as we head east out of Space Launch Complex 40 into the first of two orbits planned for today. This orbit is the parking orbit, a low Earth orbit uh, trajectory that will take us uh, over the equator and will eventually relight the upper stage engine to transfer us into the desired geostationary transfer orbit. Now main engine cutoff, or MECO, coming up in several seconds, followed by pneumatic separation. The first stage pushes away from the second stage, and then ignition of the second stage engine. Stage operation confirmed. Miko on time. Stage up looks good. And the call out, MVAC D engine is at full power. The view on the left screen, you can see the large titanium grid fins now slowly opening. That begins about a two minute period as we slowly rotate the first stage around to get it ready to come back through the atmosphere and land on the drone ship in the Atlantic off the east coast of Florida. Right hand side, second stage engine glowing red. That's normal for the MVAC-D. Trajectory. Trajectory is nominal, we've heard from the guidance engineer. Great views coming from space. We're coming up on fairing deploy. Fairing separation confirmed. And we've heard the call out from the avionics engineer. Fairing separation is confirmed. I think you can see in the background behind the MVAC-D nozzle, uh, one half of the fairing way in the distance uh, as it went past the camera. So right now we're coming up four minutes into flight. Trajectory is looking excellent. We're right down the middle of the road. Power on the upper stage engine is good. Bermuda is now getting the telemetry from the Falcon 9 and we're getting great views from space at T plus four minutes and 13 seconds.
For those of you just joining us, we had a successful liftoff of our Falcon 9 rocket at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time uh, from Cape Canaveral. Uh, on the right-hand side of your screen, our second stage, uh, its engine is glowing as we continue to take the Anasys 2 satellite payload to its desired orbit. Uh, on the left-hand side, our first stage, we're beginning, to, uh, we're beginning our recovery attempt on our drone ship uh, out in the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, the next milestones coming up include that first stage's entry burn, followed by the second stage engine cutoff, known as SECO-1, uh, the first stage landing burn, and then that hopeful landing. The entry burn will occur at about six and a half minutes after liftoff. And what you don't see pictured here are those two fairing halves. They've been jettisoned, uh, and it will take some time for them to get down to, uh, to sea level. So we won't be covering uh, on the webcast that recovery attempt status, but stay tuned on social media for updates. see some pretty clear pictures of Earth there. Uh, the first stage has reached Apogee. It's beginning to head down there. Uh, we're only going to be firing three of our Merlin engines during this entry burn in order to slow the vehicle down before it gets to the thicker parts of Earth's atmosphere. It'll slow the vehicle by about 25%. Uh, when we perform uh, stage separation, uh, that first stage was traveling about two and a half kilometers per second. So we have a lot of velocity to reduce. and we're just under 30 seconds from that entry burn beginning. It's gonna last about 24 seconds. We're 10 seconds away from entry burn. Hopefully we'll be able to hear that call out and have visual confirmation that burn's begun. Stage one, entry burn startup. Our entry burn has begun. You'll see that, that uh, the exhaust there will grow and start to become elliptical as we turn on the engines. The center engine fires first, the two side engines fire shortly after that. So that exhaust will seem to grow during this burn. Stage one, entry burn shutdown. All right, one burn down, one to go. That's the landing burn. Uh, it'll occur in about one minute from now, along with uh, the next milestone, uh, the second stage engine cutoff or SECO-1. Uh, that'll be at T plus eight minutes, seven seconds. Uh, during SECO-1, we shut down the second stage MVAC engine on the right-hand side of the screen. Also signal first stage, Cape Canaveral expected. In about 25 seconds after SECO-1, Falcon 9 will touch down, hopefully, on our drone ship. Just read the instructions. Uh, currently, it's in the Atlantic, uh, about 350 nautical miles off the coast of Florida. Start of terminal guidance. And in terms of velocity of that first stage, uh, drag alone is slowing the first stage down another 80%. That landing burn will take us back to get that last 20%, touch us down safely. Just under 10 seconds from landing burn and Seco 1. Seco. Stage one, landing burn, startup. We have confirmation of both landing burn and SECO-1. We're waiting confirmation of a good orbital insertion for that Anasys-2 satellite. And the landing Stage one. So landing laser deploying now. Nominal park orbit insertion. And there it is. That is our 57th successful landing with Falcon 9 on our drone ship. Just read the instructions. While we were watching that landing, we also had confirmation of nominal orbit insertion. Uh, we're all pretty excited over here at SpaceX for being able to use this uh, first stage for a third time coming up. Uh, but going back to our primary mission on the second stage, uh, it's going to coast for about 18 minutes until we cross the equator where we perform the second of two burns of the upper stage to help change the orbit. Uh, we're going to take a break until then. We're going to leave you with a map of where we are in the mission. We'll be back at uh, about T plus 26 minutes for the second burn of our MVAC engine.
Also signal Bermuda as expected.
Acquisition of signal, goodbye. Back chill for burn two. Welcome back. John Insparker here at SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. It's T plus 26 minutes. In about 30 seconds, we're going to get relight of the upper stage engine called second engine start number two, actually second stage engine start number two, or SES2. Now this burn will be a little more than uh, 55 seconds, and that'll carry us into the transfer orbit, and hopefully we'll be able to bring you a view of the engine burn as it gets going. From the map, you can see we're just about to cross the equator. That's where you do an inclination change that's most efficient. We've got ignition on the upper stage engine. And propulsion engineer calls out that the ignition looks good. We're up at power. Now currently when we went into the burn, we were at a low earth orbital speed of about 7.4 kilometers per second. This burn just under a minute long is gonna add another 2.5 kilometers per second to that velocity. That's what it'll take to get the satellite and the second stage into the geostationary, geosynchronous transfer orbit. We're throttling down, getting ready to shut down the engine. Seco 2. Seco 2 confirming the second stage engine cutoff number two. Now we're going to wait and listen for guidance to tell us how the orbit works. And we haven't heard guidance engineer call out, but looking at the data plots that we've got from nominal vehicle telemetry, here. we've got a nominal orbit. So we are into the desired geostationary transfer orbit, the Falcon 9 second stage with the Anasys 2 spacecraft still attached. We're now going to go through a period of about three and a half minutes where we prepare to separate the Anasys 2 satellite. We're gonna take another quick back break and we'll be back at T plus 32 minutes for satellite deploy.
Acquisition of signal, South Africa. Plus 32 minutes. It's been a great mission so far. Falcon 9 lifted off. We had a 30 minute weather delay as we had a little bit of a shower band go by uh, the trajectory. Uh, but when we launched, had great skies. We had great views from first stage and second stage. Saw the first stage land on the drone ship. We've done the two burns of the upper stage engine. Both of them were nominal. But right now we're getting ready for the big event, which is spacecraft separation. And as a reminder, we won't see payload deploy today per the customer's request. So we're gonna listen in for the avionics engineer to call it. Payload separation confirmed. And there it is, avionics engineer calls. Payload separation has deployed, confirming that via telemetry. And so 32 minutes, 49 seconds into flight. That's the camper, we've done the primary mission. We've brought the first stage back to the drone ship. It's been a great day, took a little while getting here but uh, well worth it with a totally successful mission today. And with also that successful we'll payload expected. separation that will end our coverage for today, uh, we want to say thank you to Lockheed Martin and the Republic of Korea for entrusting us with today's flight. Also, a special thanks goes out to the 45th Space Wing for range support and to the Federal Aviation Administration for licensing support. And of course, thank you for watching. Have a good night.